So hello everyone and welcome back to STW Sports. I'm host Samuel Wright, joined by Southampton fan Stephen Hazelwood. And well, Stephen, welcome to the show. Great to meet you and have you on. Um, Southampton then, 14th currently in the Premier League. It's been an eventful season so far, really, for the Saints. Not the best start, but results have picked up a little bit recently. Uh, what have you made of the season so far? I think as a long-standing Southampton fan, um, I'm not one of the doom mongers, and I think the season's actually been pretty good. I mean, you look at those first 10 games, we had a draw with Man City and a draw with Man United. Uh, Man City, we drew away, and I was at that game, and we could have won it if there was a penalty overturned. And um, I think, having seen other penalties given this season, we were unlucky to have it overturned. And if you think a club like Southampton to go to Man City with all their superstars and walk away with a point and probably be, feel slightly cheated not to get the three points. I think it was a good start to the season. A um, couple of disappointments, um, the Norwich game, but they got Dean Smith going in, so the bounce back, I suppose, but that was disappointing. And Wolves was probably the worst performance of the season, uh, which was disappointing. But I think if you look at the season now, where we are, you can see we're progressing and players are settling in. So I, I, I think it's been quite a positive year so far. Yeah, I mean, obviously, say currently 14th in the Premier League. At the start of the season, obviously, losing Danny Ings and obviously all the talk about James Ward-Prowse potentially leaving. Adam Armstrong's come in and not really got too many goals, only two so far, I believe, for the club. Um, were you worried at the start of the season that you would be in a relegation battle or did you have faith that Hassan Hootel would get you around mid-table again? I think as a Southampton fan, you always, uh, every season you stay in the Premiership's a good season and you always think there could be a relegation battle. I must admit, this season, you looked at who was coming up. You looked at Newcastle, Burnley, Norwich, and even Leeds. You felt that there was enough there that Southampton could stay up. Um, I think with Ralph, he's been learning on the job. Um, and he's a far better manager now than he was when he first came. And... Yeah, I've got faith in him. I think he, he's had limited resources. And I think at the beginning of the season, you looked at it and you thought, Danny Ings has gone. We will struggle to score goals, which we have done. But with a team that's bending in and new players and Adam Armstrong, he's only scored two goals. One of those are worldy. Well, both of them worldies, really. Um, he's missed some of the simple chances, but he's growing and he's adding a lot to the team when he does play. Um, but you looked at, I think the encouraging thing was lost Ings, but then Liveramento came with a huge reputation as one of Chelsea's best youngsters, got the young player of the year last year. And so there was hope as well. So I, I think overall, I think it we, we're 10 points clear of relegation and we should be good this season. Yeah, in terms of Hassan Hill, you touched on him there briefly. Uh, what do you make of the job he has done overall? Obviously, he's been at Southampton just over three years now, and obviously he's had his ups and downs there. But overall, though, it's got to be said, he's done a pretty steady job at the club, really. And uh, yeah, well, how do you assess the job he's done at the club? I think with the the, the change of ownership when Gao came in and uh, the change in Chinese investment laws, um, stock or overseas investment, stop money coming into the club. And so Ralph's come in with very little money um, and he's had to balance the books by selling players. He mentioned Danny Ying so he could bring in some younger players. Um, but I think overall, he's done a good job. He's he, he has made mistakes, but every manager makes mistakes. And you look at the, the two nine nils, um, it's credit to Southampton. They stuck with Ralph because I know many of a club that probably would have panicked and got rid of their manager. But both those games, he was probably late with changing the formation of the team and substitutions. Um, he's learned from that. Um, last night was the classic example. We go down to 10 men in the first half. Puts Prousey in as right back, which he's a very good right back. I mean, half Wolf is a half. Um, when we played Palace and uh, Prousey played right back, so hard didn't have any success at all. So Ralph has learned that actually you can change formation without changing the players. And he, he he's grown. And I think over the three years, if you had to give an assessment, I'd probably give him seven out of ten. 
Fair enough. I was going to avoid mentioning them 9 0 just to let you know. I'm sure <laughs> Southampton fans are sick to death of hearing about them. So I was going to try and avoid mentioning them, but uh, I'm glad I'm glad you brought it up first. Um, in terms of memories, then, uh, Southampton, obviously, when you think of you've, you've been a fan 46 years, you mentioned just before we uh, went live. Um, I mean, obviously, you must have seen some great players. Obviously, many Southampton fans would say Matt Letizier, but if your favourite ever is Matt Letizier, excluding him, um, which player for you stands out? Um, Ricky Lambert was a, a quality player. Um, and I think what I liked about Ricky Lambert was the way that he managed to go from a League One footballer to a Championship footballer, footballer to a Premiership footballer. And there aren't many players that grow every time you get promoted and they were back-to-back -back, um, promotions as well so I think yeah Ricky Lambert would stick out as a standout player I think but there have been other great ones Lallana it's fantastic and you're going back over the years you've got Alan Ball, Mick Mills, Kevin Keegan, Mick Shannon you know they're, they're, there are so many good players Alan Shearer um, so many good players came through and Gareth Bale. Yeah, in terms yeah, of in terms of managers as well, then, um, any particular managers for you stand out over the years? Um, I suppose the standout ones are probably modern era uh, managers. So you think of the Koomans and the Pochettinos. Um, and I, I, I choose those two because they got us playing fantastic football. And after they went and Puel came in, did a reasonable job, got us up to eighth. But the football was dire. Um, and with Ralph, to be fair to him, he, he's brought in good football again. But I think, yeah, Kuman and Pochettino for me, because it was just like a breath of fresh air coming into the club. Yeah, and obviously, uh, since you, you know, Southampton returned to the Premier League, which is around 10 years ago now, um, you've had some great results already, beat pretty much all the big teams. Uh, for you, um, what's been the standout result, would you say, as a Southampton fan? I think it was probably in the, well, it wasn't the Caribou Cup, but the Caribou Cup um, a couple of years ago where we went up to Liverpool and beat them in Liverpool and uh, or drew in Liverpool and then beat them at St Mary's and got through to the final. And I think that that was a terrific performance. But there, there, there's been so many. I mean, you, you just look over the years and, you know, the, the grey shirts debacle against Man U uh, when Ferguson said the players couldn't see each other. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great good day game as well. So it's very hard to pick out your favourite, I think. But the Liverpool over two legs to get through to the final was good. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned them back-to-back uh, -back promotions a moment ago as well. Um, just for the club, how big a moment was that? I mean, obviously Southampton went through some difficult times after relegation in 2005 from the Premier League. Back-to-back uh, -back promotions obviously is great no matter which team it is. But uh, for Southampton and the fact you've been in the Premier League since, you know, how important do you think them back-to-back -back promotions were for the club? Oh, that, they were massive. I mean, we'd we'd slumped down to League One. Um, we didn't start the season off brilliantly. Um, Pardew got sacked, ironically, after a 4-0 victory, but he, he got sacked. And Nigel Adkins came in and... I suppose we talk about favourite managers. Nigel Atkins is a legend of the club now. And uh, for a fairly inexperienced manager to take us up to the Premiership, it was a huge moment. And I think most Southampton fans were being realistic when we got promoted from League One. We didn't expect to go straight up again. Um, but it's huge. And being in the Premiership, I mean, financially, it, you have to be in the Premiership, really. Um, and you want to, as a fan, you want to see the best players in the world. Uh, and for that, you need to be in the Premiership. Yeah, absolutely agree. Um, obviously, yesterday you faced Swansea in the uh, FA Cup third round, um, a three, an eventful 3-2 win, but I'm actually going to, again, uh, mention a game from the past. And this game, I think, which was vital for Southampton, I mean, you did face Swansea in what was more than a relegation pointer in 2018, really. It was a game win, it basically stayed up, and uh, you did win that game 1-0. Um, obviously, that season was probably the worst Southampton have had since coming back up to the Premier League. Um, obviously, how big do you think that was as well, Southampton really staying up that season? You look at Swansea haven't come back up since, and Southampton have kind of maintained themselves as a mid-table club again. If you went down that season, do you think the outlook of the club could be very different right now? Oh, totally. I think um, that, that game was a horrible game to watch, but 1-0 Gabardini scoring and 
a fantastic player. I wish we'd kept him, really. But um, if we'd gone down, then I think we would have been in real financial trouble. Um, we would, with no investment coming in from China, we would have had to have sold the majority of our players. And I think we would have struggled to come back up. Um, thankfully, I think we're in a lot better position now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, Southampton as well, credit to the club, how they have sold so many great players in the last few years and, of course, maintained themselves as a uh, Premier League club. But we are going to switch back to the now. And uh, the next game you play is against Brentford, I believe, is on Tuesday. Um, big game at home, really. I mean, another game that if you do win, it's another step up the table, really, and another step towards survival, which is looking very good at the moment. Um, what are your thoughts going into that game? Uh I wish that we hadn't gone down to 10 men and we'd, we'd, we could have won in normal time yesterday. Um, I, I like Brentford. I think they're a good side and they play attract, attractive football. I think it's a tough game. I think especially coming off the back of yesterday and full credit to, to Ralph uh, for yesterday because he could have put out um, a younger side um, given some of the, the, the under-23 or the B team um, given some of them games, but he went with a strong side. So the plus side of that is we went through. Um, the downside is we're going to have some leggy players um, against Brentford. So I think it is a tough game. I think in normal circumstances, you would expect us to win it. Um, but I think after yesterday, I, I think it's going to be a tough ask on Tuesday. Yeah, and also, um, just a quick question, I'll mention this before the show started, uh, the Dell, of course, the stadium you did leave in 2001. Uh, final game, there was a 3-2 win over Arsenal, a very good Arsenal side under Arsene Wenger as well. Um, again, memories of the Dell, and I mean, obviously, the memories, of course, of that final game against Arsenal. Yeah, I mean, the Dell was a great ground. It, 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 it was very compact. You were close to the pitch. The atmosphere was fantastic. But I think, you know, evolving as a club, we needed to leave and build a modern stadium. But, yeah, that last game, um, it was a party atmosphere. It was it was written in the stars. I mean, to be Arsenal is good, but for Letizia to score the final goal at the Dell, um, you, you just couldn't write. If, you, if you'd written it in a story, people wouldn't have believed it. Um, uh, it it's just like a fairy tale, really. Um, and the adulation for the TGA, but also the Dell. I mean, it was our spiritual home. Um, so it was a sad day, but one that we needed to have, I think. But a great day as well with the goal. And yeah. it was a wonder goal by the Tiz as well. Yeah, absolutely. A very uh, good good goal to sign off on, of course, and from, of course, the, uh, the right player, I guess you can say. And the uh, final question I've got for you, Steve, is... Uh, Southampton, where do you think you're going to finish this season, Southampton, if you're to make a prediction at this moment in time? I think we've got a good chance of finishing in the top 10. Uh, I think we've got a few injuries. Livermento sounds like he might be out for a while. Um, but I think we, I think Adam Armstrong's going to get better. I think Brozier's going to get better. Uh, Stuart Armstrong coming back into the sides, a massive bonus. And hopefully with the new ownership, um, we're not going to go mad, but hopefully we can sign a couple of young players that Ralph can develop and move through. Um, so I, I, I'm quite positive. I think we could finish top 10 this year. Uh, well, I don't think we'll get dragged into the relegation battle. Yeah, well, very nice. So that's a, a fair prediction. And that's all we have got time for this uh, this afternoon here on S STW Sports. Thank you very much for joining me, Steve. And uh, good no, luck you. to Southampton for the rest of the season. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.